Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Most High Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Ruka Kodash. My double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone GMS who taught me this truth, which is the 100% truth. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect spread around the four corners of the earth, pushing this gospel in all truth and sincerity in these last days. Shall warm also to the few aquats who are sincerely seeking this truth. It's the brother Yara Yaya Shar Allah from the GMS Italy camp. And I just wanted to do a lesson on this topic, the untold origin of the Caucasian race. Hopefully it's going to be edifying through the spirit. So in order to go into the history of the Caucasian race, which is also known as the so-called white man race, we need to speak about someone who is Kagambulan, as you can see. Now, let's quickly go to Wikipedia. So we're just going to pick a little, just little information on Wikipedia because, as you know, Wikipedia has been tampered with, you know, when it comes to bringing out the truth. And I have a proof of that also in this video. So... It says Bulan was a Khazar king who led the conversion of the Khazars to Judaism. Okay, this is a point we should pick here. It says Bulan was a Khazar, Khazar king who led the conversion of the Khazars to Judaism. So, this there is um, there, there, there is actually a civilization of people called the Khazars. Okay, you know. The people called Khazars and they had a king, Kagan, who actually led these people into Judaism. And these people are found on the map in Eastern Europe, okay, where you have modern day um, Ukraine, some part of Russia, you know. So, as you can see on the map right there. Now, let's pick one more point here. So, you can go and read all this, you know, if you like. So he says, the name Sabriel is given in the Shekta letters, roughly con contemporous, uh, contemporaneous with King Joseph's letter for the Khazar king who led the conversion to Judaism. The Shekta letters also gives Sabriel at least a partial Jewish stroke, Israel ancestry. Okay, so the points we should pick here is the Shekta letter. Now, if I go into the Shekta letter, it says the Shekta letter is an ancient document which has been interpreted as a potential communique from an unknown Khazar author to, a, a, to an identified Jewish dignitary. Okay, so what you should know, what they will tell you here, if you go keep reading, they'll tell you that they know a little, only they know only little about it. Whereas this letter as I speak to you today, speaks a seats in Cambridge University. Okay, this letter six sits in Cambridge University, and it is a very important document, you know, a very important, you know, archaeological find that tells you about these people, the people of the Khazars. Okay, so they purposely hide this letter because it contains a lot of information that is really going to expose who these people are. Now, this is what the letter looks like, you know. These are what the letters looks like. You know, they found them different scrolls. You know, now, let's see what it is. This is the Shekta letters. You know, it says, it's found in the uh, University of Cambridge. It says, confirms they are Khazars. Okay, these are the Khazars. It says, 915 AD. It says, the, this, this, that's when they found the letter, I believe. It said, descendants of Amalek head tribe of Edom, which we're going to get that in the Bible as well. So it says the descendants of Amalek, that's the head tribe of Edom, are all, they are actually the Khazars, okay? And these Khazars, they, they converted into Judaism, okay? It was found, it was found in Cairo in 1898 AD. So he says the Shekta letters are a collection of papers found in a Cairo Geniza and has a Kazakh correspondence from 950 AD. 
between Asdai ibn Sharopt, foreign secretary to the Caliph of Cordoba, and Joseph Kagan of the Khazars, it gives both an um, um, account of the Khazar conversion to Judaism and of its progress in subsequent generation as as well as details of the fall of the Khazar Empire in 969. Okay, so what you should understand here, what you should understand here is this letter has actually give a correspondence, okay, of these people, okay, and it gives a genealogy, okay, it gives um it gives um some genealogy, some genealogy of these people who they are. So these people are the Khazarias, okay. You should bear in mind and remember that they converted into Judaism. They were not, they were not um the people, you know, they are not the people, the real people of Israel, but they converted into that. Okay. So and it gives you know a timeline of all this, you know. So now let's get back to some. Now, one of those letters you can find there, which is important, you know, is, you know, it gives you the, the family line of these people. I told you that it comes from, they come from Amalek, the, the head family of Edom. So you can see Amalekite princes of R1A YDNA. So it tells you that these people come from the Amalekites. You can see Kagan, Amalek, you know. These people are Amalekites. Okay, now before we get there, I want to bring out a book that I actually read before coming into this truth, which is a book that you know I I would yeah I would I would recommend. The title of the book is The Thirteenth Tribe. Okay, written by Otto Koesler. In which this man actually goes deep into the history you know what he did was he he, he collected um historical facts historical writing from different historians and different travelers okay of the past you know and it, it brought them all together in a book you know bringing out the fact that the people who occupy jerusalem today who call themselves the jews you know they are actually of the origin of of the Khazars, Khazars, okay? Which Khazars are a lineage of um of Amalek, of the sons of Esau, okay? Now, I these are the highlights that I made while reading the book. I just wanted to share a few. So here he says a few a few later a few a few years later probably AD 740, the king, his court and the military ruling class embraced the Jewish faith and Judaism became the state religion of the Khazars. Okay, then here it says, this was written before the full extent of the Holocaust was known. Okay, but that, but that does not alter the fact that a large majority of surviving Jews in the world is of Eastern European and thus perhaps mainly of Khazar origin. If so, this would mean that their ancestors came not from the Jordan but from the Volga, not from Canaan but from the Caucasus, okay, once believed to be, to be the cradle of the Aryan race and that genetically they are more closely related to their own Uyghurs. And Magia's tribe than to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Should this turn out to be the case, then the anti the term anti-Semitism would become void of meaning based on a misapprehension shared by both the killers and their victims. The story of the Khazar Empire as it slowly emerges from the past begins to look like the most cruel hoax which the history has ever perpetuated and which that is very very true you know now let's get some more it says a georgian chronicle echoing an ancient tradition identifies them with the host of gog and magog which you know that 
um, the land in which the Russians occupy today, which some part of it used to be known as Kazaria, okay, it, the, that land was occupied by the ancient Gog and Magog before they got there and took the land over to them, you know. And listen to what it says. It says, wild men with hideous faces and the manners of wild beasts, eaters of blood. An Armenian writer refers to the horrible multitude of Khazars with insolent, broad, lashless faces and long falling hair like women. <laughs> so can you see that's actually talking about the so-called white man that you see today? Okay. The so-called white man that you see today, this that's the race. They call them the the Caucasians because that area that area that you see right there let me just put mountains mountain of Caucasus Caucasus okay that's why they are called Caucasians you know on map that's why they called Caucasians because they come from this area, okay, and they speak only very little about this place. So you can see it's a connection of um of Russia, Georgia, some part of Armenia, Azerbaijan, you know, connecting to the Red Sea, Ukraine as well. So that's the area where this so-called Caucasians actually came from. Okay. Now I want to read some excerpts that I kept aside now before i do that let me still get some more points that i'm that i highlighted here it says the khazars and their kings are all jews the bulgars and all their neighbors are subject to him they treat him with worshipful obedience some are of the opinion that gog and magog are khazars so now, one point you should understand is when he speaks of Jews, he speaks of the southern tribe, which is which consists of um, of Judah, Benjamin, and Levite mostly. Okay, in which you can have a little of other tribes in them, but you know the major tribes that consist of the Jews is the is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Okay, so these people claim that they are actually that tribe. The question is where are the rest of the tribes okay because in today modern day jewry you know they'll tell you that um they are jews you know so they are actually saying that they are of the tribe of judah benjamin and levi but what about Issachar, asha what about um naphtali reuben dan sorry um god what about the rest of these tribes you know they don't tell you anything that's because they actually embraced that's they, they, they created they embrace that's the creation of the religion actually that's how they created the religion and they embraced it you know i have let me let's read here it says the dreary tale always starts with a honeymoon and ends in divorce and bloodshed in the beginning the jews are pampered with special charters privileges favors they are a personae grate, like the court alchemist, because they alone have the secret of how to keep the wheels of the economy turning. Now that should that should you know enlighten your mind to something else. These are the you know the so-called banking families that you have today. So now this is um this is an excerpt, you know, it says from the Tatint tribe actually. This is someone else commenting on the book. You know, so he came up with some points, which he says, The Tatsint tribe proves beyond doubt that modern Jews are not biblical Israelites. Okay, now let's read from here. He says, This book traces the history of the ancient Khazar Empire, a major but almost forgotten power in Eastern Europe, which in dark ages became converted to Judaism. Khazaria was finally wiped out by the forces of Genghis Khan. But evidence indicates that the Khazars themselves migrated to Poland and formed the cradle of Western Jewry. The Khazars 
sway extend from the Black Sea to the Caspian, from the Caucasus to the Volga, and they are instrumental in stopping the Muslim onslaughts against Byzantium, the eastern jaw of the gigantic Pinta movement that in the west swept across North Africa and into Spain. Now, I just want to pick out some uh, few points here that we are going to go to the encyclopedia to get more understanding of who these people are. Okay, it says, Koesla, who is the writer of that book that I just showed you, traces most Jews back to a people called Khazars in Western Asia and Southern Russia and links the Khazar with Goma and Magog grandsons of Noah through Japheth, okay, and which is mistaken there because, you know, they actually overtook that land from those people, but they are not of that stock. These people are out, they are also from, they are also Shemitic, you know, but they are not the real Hebrew Israelites who the promise is given to. The promise was given through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but they, they went through Abraham, um Isaac and Esau. So the promise is not given to them. I just wanted to check out some stuff here. I would have really loved to read everything because he, he actually he actually brought out different books. Now let me read a few from okay, yeah. There's something really interesting I brought. He said, shortly after World War I, Henry Ford, founder of the Ford Motor Company, assembled a staff of experts in Detroit to conduct research on the Eastern Jews who had been entering America in a large number since the 1880s. Ford provided the staff with several million dollars for this research and in 1923, he published the results in a four-volume work titled The International Jew. It was Henry Ford's conclusion that very few of these people who called themselves Jews were descendants of the Bible Israelites. Ford further proves that these Jews, using all sorts of crimes while under the cloak of being the chosen people of the Bible, were rapidly taking economic and political control of America. Okay, pay attention. In the religious field, Ford claims the Jews had secretly gained control of most Protestant seminaries and Christian book publishing houses and had been able to remove almost all criticism of Jews from, Christ, um, from Christian literature. And that's what they continue doing. They keep suppressing, you know, the truth because they actually, they actually made their way into power. That's how they made their way. And what they did was, you know, they overcame the... They overcame the um, the Roman Emperor Empire, which was you know, which was under the rule of Jake, you know. But all this happened because the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai actually made these things to happen. You know, it was the time for them to rule, you know. And they got power, they infiltrate, and they get into you know the higher, the highest ranks of society, and they do this by 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 um, by lying, you know. By by um, what's the right word I'm looking for? By trickery, you know. Um, they do it by by guys, you know. These people are some slick people, man. So he says, in the religious field, Ford claimed the Jews had secretly gained control of most Protestant seminaries. I already read this. They say, in summing up these findings, Henry Ford stated, the Jews are not the chosen people. Though practically the entire church has succumbed to the propaganda which declares them to be so, you know, and this is the guy that actually made the Ford car, you know, so the, he, he, he sponsored a research on these people, and this is fine. Is he say Ford's book caused a furor for a few years, but soon disappeared from the colleges, universities, and public libraries, and became unobtainable at any price. You know, <laughs> it says the churches continue to teach the Jews are God's chosen people, Israel. And by then, Jewish dominated news media began to refer to Jews always as Israelites. So do you see how this thing, you know, you see how, you, how, how you know, gradually it says anyone opposing the increasing Jewish control of the nation was immediately branded anti-Semitic and Jewish dominated seminaries 
taught new ministries to quote Genesis 12, 1 to 3, and sternly warned their flock that anyone speaking unfavorably of these people, of these Jews, would be caused by God. Jewish control of American society, politics, and religions continue to increase. And that's exactly what they're still doing. Now, if they are the people of, of the Most High, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahushai, if they are the people of the Bible, you know, if you go through the book of Deuteronomy 28, there are causes that are meant to be on them. But these people, they are untouchable in the society today. You can't say anything against them. Algorithms are a place, to, you know, to, 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 to take off your videos. And I hope they don't take down this video, really. Um, you know, these people are actually protected. They are in the highest strata of this, of, of this society, you know. It says, in... 1951, retired U.S. military intelligence officer Colonel John Beatty published a scholarly, a scholarly two sixty-five pages page book, Iron Curtain Over America. In its collection, Beatty gave overwhelming evidence this strange race of Eastern European Jews were actually Khazar and Mongol Asiatics and had no racial ancestry in Israel at all. He then proved that by 1951, these Jews had a strange hold on American politics, on banking and credit, on all sources of news, on the entertainment industry, on America's education system, and that they were the predominant race as judges, lawyers, doctors, and in organized crime. <laughs> and mind you, the word crime comes from chrism. You know, as the as the apostles always teach us, you know, it comes from chrism and chrism is red, you know. Now it says it says the Jewish news media refused to review the book. Okay? Jewish book dealers refused to handle it. Christian bookstores ignored it, and only a few thousand copies were distributed. Most Americans can never um most Americans never heard of Iron Cotton of America. Now, because of renewed interest, both international Jews in an abridged edition and, and Iron Cotton over America had been reprinted and are available. The latest and perhaps the most succinct book on this subject is Israel's $5 trillion secret by Colonel Curtis B. Dole, former son-in-law of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Okay, so you see, these people know there is there is something that these people know that they've been trying to voice out, but these people in power, this line of the Kazarias who are actually sons of Amalek, in which we're going to get this from, you know, trusted resources, you know. It says, and a personal acquaintance of many high officials in the U.S. government since the 1930s, Colonel uh, lives and works in Washington, D.C. area, and his book published in it. Okay, let's read what it says. Now, it says, it says, Thou proves again from reliable sources that the Jews are not Israelites. In fact, Colonel Dow calls this masquerade as Israel, the greatest hoax of the last centuries. It should be read by every non-Jew in America. He says, you now know this false identity as Israel protects these Jews from them from, from being exposed as alien and as an anti-American. Read this book below, okay? Yeah. So this is what you should understand. This is really interesting because these people, that is why they actually move in secrecy. That's why they have these secret societies. That's why they have, you know, a lot of, you know, secrecy between them because they have these secrets to, 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 to maintain, to keep. That's why, you know, they swear by blood, they take hoods. You know, in order for you to get to certain um, levels in society, you know, you need to be part of their blood, you know, because there is, this is the secret that, you know, they've been hiding for a long time. Okay. So this is another another source in which i'll just pick a few points here it says an israeli scholar a n poliak a tel aviv university professor of medieval jewish history quoted by Kwesla, states that the descendants of khazar jews those 
who stayed where they were in Kazaria, those who emigrated to the United States and to other countries, and those who went to Israel constitute now the large majority of the world jewelry. Okay, so having read that, I am going back to. So now we understand, we have a little understanding of, you know, the people of the Kazaria, people of Kazaria, okay, who converted to Judaism, okay. And we have the proof of the, um, of the finding, okay, the archaeological finding, which is the Shekta letters, which is found in the Cambridge universities, you know, that speaks of the conversion of these people. Let's read it again. It says, the Shekta letters are a collection of papers found in a Cairo Geneta and has a Khazar correspondence from 950 AD between Asdai ibn Sharob, foreign secretary to the Caliph of Cordoba, and Joseph Kagan of the Khazars, it gives both an account of the Khazar conversion to Judaism and of its progress in subsequent generations, as well as details of the fall of the Khazar Empire in 969. So when the empire fell, they actually all fled down to Western Europe. Okay, and here we have, you know, some of the, the uh, family tree, the genealogy of this uh, ruling class, in which they all come from Amalek. And now, that is the point we want to bring out a little bit. Now, I am going to, I'm going to get all these from very trusted resource because, you know, there are no other stronger resources than, what do you call them, the encyclopedia, okay? And those are the old encyclopedias, not the new ones. So what I did was, you know, I actually got, you know, some from this website, you know, some some encyclopedia um, excerpts, you know. So I put them together because reading like this, it's really hard for me. You can see, it says the Kazaz, well, you know, these are modern encyclopedia, you know, the Encyclopedia Britannica. The Academic American Encyclopedia Deluxe Library Edition. So I actually copied from this page and I wrote them down here. So we're going to read. It says Encyclopedia. And if I remember, I'll put that link in the description box or in the comments. If anyone needs, should you just write me and I'm going to, you know, drop it in the comments. It says Encyclopedia Americana 1985. It's a Khazar, an ancient Turkic speaking people who ruled a large and powerful state in the steep north of the Caucasus mountain from the 7th century to their demise in the mid 11th century AD. In the 8th century, its political and religious head, as well as the greater part of the Khazar nobility, abandoned paganism and converted to Judaism. The Khazars are believed to be the ancestors of most Russian and Eastern European Jews. This is Encyclopedia Britannica, the 15th edition. It says, Khazars, confederation of Turkic and Ira Iranian tribe that established a major commercial empire in the second half of the 6th century, covering the southeastern section of modern European Russia. In the middle of the 8th century, the ruling classes adopted Judaism as their religion. Now, this is the Academic American Encyclopedia, 1985. It says, Askenazim, the Askenazim are one of the two major divisions of the Jews, the other being the Shephardim. Okay, Encyclopedia Americana, it says, Askenazim and the Ask, um, Askenazim are the Jews whose ancestors lived in German land it was among Ashkenazi Jews that the idea of political Zionism emerged, leading ultimately to the establishment of the, um, of the state of Israel in the late 1960s. Okay, and that was in um, 1948. Ashkenazi, Ashkenazi Jews numbered some 11 million, about 84% of the world Jewish population. It says the Jewish Encyclopedia. It says Khazars, a non-Semitic Asiatic Mongolian tribe, tribal nation who emigrated into Eastern Europe about the first century, 
who were converted as an entire nation to Judaism in the 7th century by the expanding Russian nation which absorbed the entire Khazaria population and who account for the presence of Eastern Europe of the great number of Yiddish-speaking Jews in Russia. Now, mind you, Yiddish, you know, was their language in which the, the modern Hebrew is actually, you know, corrupted it's not the the original hebrew it's not the last one kadash you know the this language is actually a, a mixture of this their language which is yiddish with germanic and slavonic languages and they just you know they made in macedonia and you know presented you a new language the modern hebrew it says the yiddish speaking jews in russia post poland lithuania galatia Bessarabia, and romania Encyclopedia Judaica, 1972, it says Khazars, a national group of the general Turkic type, independent and sovereign in Eastern Europe between the 7th and 10th century CE, current era. During part of this time, the leading Khazars professed Judaism. In spite of the negligible information of an archaeological nature, the presence of Jewish group and the impact of Jewish idea in Eastern Europe are considerable during the Middle Ages. Group have been, groups have been mentioned as a migrating to Central Europe from East, often being referred to as Khazars, thus making it impossible to overlook the possibility that they originated from within the former Khazar Empire. Now, this is very funny because, you know, this so-called... Um, these so-called scholars of today, they would speak as, as if they know nothing about this Khazar Empire in which we have archaeological findings. We have everything, you know, to go into these people and prove to you that these are the Caucasians and these are the people that are calling themselves, you know, these modern day Jews, you know. They have nothing to do with that land, you know. They all came from Khazaria, you know. So he says... The Universal Jewish Encyclopedia, the primary meaning of Ashkenaz and Ashkenazim in Hebrew is German and Germans. This may be due to the fact that the home of these ancient ancestors of the Germans is, is, is Media, which is Biblical Ashkenaz. Okay, Krauss is of the opinion that in the early medieval ages, the Khazars were sometimes referred to as Ashkenazim. Okay, about 92% of all Jews or approximately 14,500,000 are Ashkenazim. It says the Bible relates that the Khazar Ashkenaz Jews were at this were are were, were are the sons sons of Japheth, not Shem. But that's that's a misinterpretation, you know. Okay, we know that the Japhites are are the so-called Etruscans, you know. It says now. These are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood, the sons of Japheth, the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz. Therefore, the Bible proves that Ashkenaz Jews, Khazar, are not the descendants of Shem and cannot be Semites, you know. But the point where they are trying to point you to is that these people are not, these people are not, what do they call them? They are not the um, the people of of the promise that's the point they're trying to let you know they are not the real hebrew israelites you know they are actually of a different stock okay and as i showed you they come from the line lineage of amalek now it says the encyclopedia americana calls Ira, um Iricanus, a jewish high priest in 13 um in 135 to 105 bc it says who forced the idumians to become jews Idumia is the Greek for Edomites. The works of Josephus, Josephus okay, relates how the Idumians were forced to accept Judaism. Okay, so those are the Edomites. This is the work of Josephus. You know, he's telling you how the um, the Idumians, okay, which are the Edomites, how they were forced to accept Judaism. In the Bible, Esau, Edom, Mount Seir, and Idumia are interchangeable for the offspring of Esau, Jacob's twin brother. So you can see, you can find these information also in the encyclopedia. Now let's make a quick check if I'm not if I'm not leaving anything behind. You no. Know, 
there is a point that I, I remember I got from this excerpt that I would like to share. Bear with me. Now, that's a book that I would advise anyone who wants to really understand more about, you know, to go read. Yeah, it says, as Kressler points out, Jews of our times fall into two main divisions, the Shafadim and the Ashkenazim. The Sephardi descendants of the Jews who had lived in Spain until their expulsions. These were proper real Jews, I believe, with the Muslims, okay, at the end of the 15th century, who later settled in a country's bordering on the Mediterranean, spoke a Spanish Hebrew dialect, Ladino. These were the real Hebrews, you know. Those were that's when the uh, the so-called Negroes, you know, during the Dark Ages, the so-called Dark Ages, they ruled over Europe. They had a strong hold in in Spain and Italy in England and all parts of Europe, you know. But later they started in the 15th century, you know, that was the end of their of their rule, you know. They were they were they were all sent out, you know, they were expelled. Then what happened? They came in with a new type of Hebrews, yeah, you know, with a new type of Jews, you know, <laughs> which were actually the Edomites, the, the Khazarians, you know. So let's read again. It says as Quesla points out, Jews of our time fall into two main divisions, Shephardim and Ashkenazim. He says the Shephardi descendants, okay, which the Ashkenazim defend, their descendants are those whom we've been reading, you know, who are the, the Khazarians, okay, Kenazim, Khazaria, you know. He says the Shephardim descendants of the Jews who had lived in Spain until their expulsion with the Muslims at the end of the 15th century who later settled in the countries bordering the Mediterranean spoke a Spanish Hebrew dialect Ladino in which these other people the Ashkenazim don't do they have a different language which is the Yiddish okay in the 1960s the Sephardim numbered about 500,000 the Ashkenazim at the same period were about 11 million those in common parlance Jew is practically synonymous with Ashkenazi Jew, you know. Now, the Jews that we know today are synonymous, synonymous with the Ashkenazi Jews, but not the Shafadim Jews who were actually those that spoke the Hebrew dialect, Ladino, okay. So, having said that, you know, let's see. I just wanted to bring out those points again, you know, from the book. It says, a Georgian chronicle echoing an ancient tradition identifies them with the host of Gog and Magog, wild men with hideous faces and the manners of wild beasts, eaters of blood. An Armenian writer refers to the horrible multitude of Khazars with insolent broad lashless faces and long falling hair like women they have long falling hairs they are eaters of blood now who does things like this 90 percent of my diet is raw sheep meat Those i'm just some like buddy living in obscurity eating my intestine smoothies in my kitchen no. who does things like this so called Let me just bring it back a little bit. Eat my intestine smoothies. Who does things like this? Watch. About 90% of my diet is raw sheep meat. So you see, the spirit still, you know, it still flows in these people, man. That's who they are. They are the, they are the Ashkenazi Jews, okay? Who they are not really Jews anyway. They come from Khazaria, okay? They are Khazarians. So now you can see the points that I actually brought out. They're most from they're almost from the from the encyclopedia, if not all. And let's see if I still have something else from this place. Because here you have a lot, you know. This 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 link actually brings together all different kinds of um extracts from you know. You can still keep reading.
well anyway um there is a lot to read here man but i can't go into everything if not the lesson is going to be too long now let's go back so here we have more of their family lineage okay and you will always find kazars you know you what you find out that they are actually from the lineage of amalek okay they are amalekites in which if you go into the bible if you go into the bible and you write the word amalek just to give you an understanding of who Amalek is. So it tells you, And Timna was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. This is Genesis 36, 12. Genesis 36, 16. And you remember the sons of Amalek and sons of um, Esau became dukes, in which that's something that actually still cuts, my, cuts me, you know. It says, Duke Korah, Duke Gatan, and Duke Amalet. These are the dukes that came of Eliphaz in the land of Edom. These were the sons of Adam. Now, I went on the internet and I wrote the word dukes, which let's try it. Let's try to see. You know, these are the people that call themselves dukes, you know. Let's go to go dock. I said dukes you know now if I go to images no dukes of the world let me just put it like this I don't want to give that name of Esau you see it shows you all these Caucasian people but you see, Duke of Wellington, that's the Duke of Wellington. You see, who is Edom? Duke. You see, they tell you that the Dukes are the Edomites. You see, these are the sons of Esau, Duke of Edinburgh. You see, they, are the, they still call themselves Duke to this date, you know. Dukes of Bavaria, which let's see. And you see, these are all Edomites, you know. This is actually when they got in power. Because I have some documents that I also saved, but I don't want to go into, see, the Duke of Westminster, you know. You see, these are Edomites, you know. The truth is just right there, man, you know. So the sons of Esau became dukes and they're actually still being called dukes till this date. You know, you say, then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Raphidim. Amalek is actually a perpetual enemy to Israel. They were the first people that fought with Israel when they came out of, of, um, of, of Egypt, you know. And the Lord said unto Moses in the book of Exodus 17, 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and we ask it in the ears of Joshua. For we utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And this is a future judgment that is going to come through our Lord, Savior, Yahweh Shai. You see, this is the book of Exodus 17, 16. Say, for he said, because the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Shai, had sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So we are always going to have problems with these Amalekites from generation to generation. They are our major enemies and that's that's who they are. The problems that you're seeing that we're facing in this world today is all due to the Amalekites, you know, the Edomites, you know, not only them, all the roots of Edom, but you know, this these Amalekites are actually the, the, the ruling class, you know. That's why they preserve their blood. They marry them amongst themselves, you know. They have the secret societies that they don't, they don't let you get certain secrets. But all their secrets have been made bare, man. Esau is made bare. Everything is exposed, you know. These are the Amalekites, you know. It 
says in the book of Deuteronomy 25, 19, it says, Therefore it shall be when thy Lord Yahweh Shemiah Shai, thy power at giving thee rest from all thy enemies round about thee in the land which the Lord Yahweh Shemiah Shai, the power giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. You know, we attempted during the time of um, King Saul, but Saul didn't, didn't blot them out. You know, he made many of them to escape. You know, so their seed is still preserved. You know, remember Eman, the Agagite, you know, which was of the lineage of, um, of, of, of Amalek because Agag is one of the, is the, I think the, the, let's see, Agag. I know I didn't write it correctly. Agag. Agag. You see, and he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, you know. So you have from that same lineage, you know, they went on and that's where you have, you know, the lineage of uh, Alexander, the, um, Alexander the, the freak, you know. So their lineage is still preserved to this day, you know. They actually went, the most I actually, you know, that's the period of um, the serpent shall be, shall be locked for a thousand years or so, you know. Um, that, was, that was when um, Jake started ruling in Europe, you know, it's in the book of Revelation, but I don't want to go into that. that. Anyway, going back to what we were speaking about. So over here, I still have more, more, more of their, more of their genealogy, you know. This is when the Shekta letters came into place that exposed these people. So you can see, it says, oh, look, the word Duke Taxony of Hungary. You see, these Dukes, these Dukes are all see they are the sons of um of Esau you know they save this um they save their their kingdoms for their sons and so as you can see this is where it is found you know this is Kazaria you know and it all started here that's the book of Genesis 25 25 it's all started here you know, let's get the book of Genesis 25, 25. Now, I'll read before that. I'll read from Genesis 25, 23, and it says, And the Lord Yahweh Shemiah Shai said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manners of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. So you see, and when our days to deliver were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in our womb, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau, Aishashua, because they called him Esau, which is in the Hebrew tongue is Aishashua, which means wasted away because he had no pigmentation on his skin. You know, that's Esau right there. You know, then if you go on through the story, you see they became enemies. You know, Esau wanted to kill Jacob because he sold his birthright. And Jacob also you know, he tricked Esau and got his blessing in which it was all set up by the monster Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. You know, as in the, the the vision that was given to 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 not a vision actually that um that was told to Sarah that you know the younger no the elder shall serve the younger. So it was all ordained by the monster Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. This was their first settlement, which is which is um Sierra. 
okay, Mount Sierra, which they got from the Hittites, okay, and you can see their their constructions and archaeology, um, architecture type, architecture which they carry along to this day. Now, this was the first. That's why they they are called Caucasians, you know, the cave dwellers actually. So from here they moved to the area of the Caucasus. So you can see the movement. From there they moved to the let's say map of Asia and Europe. So as you can see, they did they had a movement like this a migration that's Israel right there, you know, and right at the south of um at the south of Israel, I believe, you had Edom Mount Seir. That was their first habitation. And what happened? They moved all the way to these places and dominated all this place. And this is where you have the Kazaria Empire, you know. This is where they had the Khazaria Empire. And what did they do? Through the years, they started moving westward, westward, and overcame all these places. You know, that's Esau for you. These are the Edomites. Know the true history of the Caucasians. Okay, these are the cave dwellers, you know. If you read the book of Obadiah 1, 3, thou that dwellest in the, uh, in the cleft of the, let's see what he says. But Daya one tree. It says, "The pride of thine heart has deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the cleft of the rocks, <laughs> of the rock whose habitation is high, that set in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground." So those are the Edomites, the Khazars, you know, who, who later, you know, embraced the Jewish religion. So you can see these are more photos from Mount Sierra. So this is their first habitation, as I told you. Then later, when they moved to Europe, they carried all this architect and brought it down to Greece, brought it down to Rome, brought it down to Washington. So you can see it says the Edomites. So if you don't see all these things, it means you're blind. You're not meant to see it. The Edomite kingdom is styled all in Mount Sierra. You can see the same old architecture type. They brought it to Greece, they brought it to Rome, to Spain, to France, Germany, Russia, Great Britain, United States. These are these people, man. It's their time to rule now. And this is the end of their rulership, man. You know, this is Esau. They went down to America as well. It's still the same old people, the red skinned people, you know. This was Esau. The Nazi, the Russians, Esau. The Nazi, you see, they are all Esau. Edomite says nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes 1 9. That's true. <laughs> Terrorists who destroyed ancient black Jerusalem and later enslaved you people from Africa. We are your enemies. We are here to oppress you. Yeah. Now, the question is as you can see, this is. The Ark of Titus, in which they actually built in 70 AD. Okay, no, I can't remember when they built it, but you know, they built it right after the, they won the conquest in 70 AD. You know, this is when they went down to Jerusalem to steal all the things that are in Jerusalem. You know, they think this history is going to be forgotten. They actually made a monument, you know, commemorating their loot, their killing. Their destruction that they brought on the Israelites. And this is the event that caused the Israelites to flee. The Israelites that were in the southern kingdom, the Jews, this was the event that made Israel desolate, you know. They fled and they went to all different parts of the world, most especially West Africa and Europe, you know. They also went down there to Africa to 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 pick them up you know take them to all different parts of the world like um, uh, like us to build the united states but united states was already occupied by the by by the tribes of the 
of the um, northern tribe. You know, you find that in the book of um, Second Ezra. I did a lesson regarding that. I can't remember, you know. So, still going, you say, it says, praying for those in poverty. <laughs> Why hoarding billions of dollars? It's like having the cure for cancer and praying for the people to get better. <laughs> and you can see, these are the dukes, man. These are the sons of Esau. They're still ruling. These are Kazarians, you know. These are the basest of humans on earth that you can see. All the problems we're all facing right now. Thanks to these people, man. And this is what they used to do. This is what the, the so-called white man used to do. The Caucasian, you know, he enjoys, you know, killing people, cutting off their, chopping off their heads and doing all kinds of abominable experiments. Who he is a cannibal as well. He feasts on these people. You know, that's another lesson. And that's the book that I was reading. Delective, uh, delective um, I can't remember. I can't remember the title, but it speaks about how this man, you know, is a cannibal. He, he used to eat the slaves, you know, who are the so-called Negroes, Native Americans and Latinos, the sons of Israel. So you can see the Rothschild emblem, the Russian emblem. These people all come from the same from the same root and you should know who these people are these people are the real sons of esau those are the main children of esau you know but the most High is great because it's going to bring them down through themselves you see this is america this is ancient egypt the nazis and rome so you see something always amongst them you know the ego which is also prophesied in the book of obadiah i believe Though you set your nest uh, on eye as the eagle, I'll bring you down. You know? These are the Edomites. Okay? These are the so-called people. The Dukes of Esau. You know? And these are the people occupying the land today. The Holy Land today. Portraying themselves to be, to be the, 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 the chosen people. <laughs> but would 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 see what's going to happen anyway. This is a video you should see. It says Jewish ritual. They drink blood and suck babies' dick. Now, where in the Bible is this written? You know that these people are an abominable people. They cannot. There is no way they can be the people of the chosen of the Most High. Now watch. A young Orthodox Jewish woman is now speaking out, claiming a local rabbi is infecting babies, making them sick. And what's worse, she says no one is doing anything to stop him. For centuries, when a Jewish baby boy is born, the ancient ritual of circumcision is performed. But in some ultra-Orthodox communities, religious leaders known as Moyles also engage in something controversial during the bris. In a practice known as Metsitsa Bepe, or just MBP, the Moyle actually uses his mouth to suck the blood from the infant's penis after he cuts off the foreskin. Meant to prevent infection and serve as a celebration of life, News 12 has learned the little known whistleblower, a young Orthodox Jewish. So, as you can see, when they circumcise this baby, because they are perverse people, man. Perverse people, man. They've taken over the papacy, and you can see um, all different kinds of allegations on them. Children is going missing different things you know because these people are devils you know they are devils now to close the lesson i really can't remember i came across this video but i actually i i downloaded it from youtube and this is <laughs> this is an epic piece you know <laughs> let's see what it says okay this is wikipedia and look at the term Edom. Now, as you know, in part one, this Israeli, uh, these Americans called the Israelis Edomites. But now when you look up the term Edom, 
okay? And Wikipedia, this is what I found, okay? Now they're going to go on to break down the word idiot, uh, eat them, and I do me in such a light. You go all the way down to the bottom, scroll all the way down. And as we told people many times before, the Edomites identify with Rome. Here, identification with Rome, okay? Identification with Rome. All right. So basically, the Edomites been identified with Rome. And we're gonna read a little more. Okay. Go down. This is a special. This is a treat. And this is show you how these devils try to trip you up. And you can see it says remnants of Amalek right there. Remnants of Amalek. Now the funny thing is, if you go on Wikipedia and you put down this. This has been taken down, man. They've changed the story, you know. This has been taken down. That's why you can't trust the Wikipedia for all your information. Because, like I said, in part one, you had these um, so-called Christians, so-called white people, trying to claim that they're Israelites, which we just read a ton of curses, and we're gonna go on to further tear that, tear that lie down. But first, we have this, you gotta see this, brothers. This is on Wikipedia. Under Edom, down near the bottom. Identification with Rome. Okay. Later in Jewish history, the Roman Empire came to be identified with Edom. See that? Later in Jewish history, the Roman Empire came to be identified with Edom. And specifically, the remnants of Amalek. And still designate nowadays Western countries. Okay. Now, the interesting thing that I found about that is when you read it and it says Western countries and you click on the link telling you what it is, what the Edomites are today and it gives you Western world and you look down, you see a map and all the blue shaded areas of places where Edomites would be today. You see that? Canada, America, Mexico, North Central South America, Southern Africa, South Africa, Australia, Europe, the whole, almost the whole of Europe, okay? As we've been telling you people, Iceland and, or Greenland or whatever it's called, Greenland I think, and Iceland, that little island there. And as we've been telling you people, and I'm going to go back just so you can see that brothers. Alright, this is the article with Edom, identification with Rome, later in Jewish history, the Roman Empire came to be identified with Edom and specifically the remnants of Amalek and as we know and we keep bringing out the Amalekites are those so-called Jews now and still designate nowadays Western countries when you click on the link it tells you about the Western world and it's showing you all the places where the Edomites would dwell now as we've been telling you and the reason why it's showing America because the so-called white man is here he's in Canada Okay, he's in Mexico. He took the tribes captive. And they're the ones that played slavery in all these parts, okay? But the Israelites, as we know, if we're gonna get into, they sailed over here from Israel. And the main thing I want your brother to see is he even got a little speck of blue right there. So there's Edomites in Israel, South Africa, Australia, Europe, America, Canada, North Central South America, and the Caribbean. All the places where the main Israelites, the bulk of the Israelites are, this is Edom. It's got them in captivity, okay? And we even got a map of Europe, just so you people can see it. We've been telling you. We've been telling you. This is the map of Europe, the Western world, okay? Iceland. Look at that. Norway, Sweden, Finland. Basically all of Europe. Look at that. Spain, France, Spain, Portugal. First slaves documented came from Spain. Who went into Spain? Edomites went into Spain. And they took over all these lands. Turkey, you know, Ukraine, all these lands. Look at that. And that's how we know these devils know, man. Go over here. One last time. Let's do it one more time. Identification with Rome. Later in Jewish history, the Roman Empire came to be identified with Edom. And specifically the remnants of Amalek and still designate nowadays Western countries. When you click on the link, it takes you right to the Western countries. Okay? And you brothers can go on that Wikipedia, type in Edom, and you can see everything shaded in blue is the lands where Edomites 
will be roaming and ruling today. And as we know, they are. Okay? Now. All right, so we're back. Now. So as you can see, listening to the to the voice, I believe it's, it was the elder Manata Zach Bar. You know? So, hey, <laughs> these people have nothing on the truth, man. <laughs> the truth prevails. <laughs> so he so can do whatever he, he likes, you know? He can hire out different kinds of writers or whatever, you know, bringing out all kinds of um, stupid... Um, stupid um narratives you know without any background you know without any solid proof you know they have nothing to back it up you know so hey i hope this lesson was edifying you know the so-called um kazarians you know who are the caucasians okay they are actually the people occupying the land of of israel today claiming to be the jews you know and the real israelites are the so-called negroes native americans and the latinos those are the real israelites hopefully this lesson was at the final i want to give all praises to the most high yahweh bahashem yahweh shai bahashem rika kodash my double honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone gms who taught me this truth shalom